Hey guys, thanks for jumping on Athlete Performance Series Part 2, Jumping Like a Pro. So why do you want to jump like a pro? Well, you're going to train the SSC or the stretch shortening cycle, which is really important for producing power, becoming a better athlete. You know, speed kills, power kills, strength kills, all those kind of one-liners you've heard before are dead true. How do you do that is you nail the basics with jumping and landing. That's the first part of it. That's why I'm doing this first in our series. So. Uh, with jumping, you're going to increase your tendon stiffness, which is going to increase your movement efficiency and make you a better athlete as well. Overall, this is all to do with producing more power, okay? Producing more power, as I just mentioned, makes you a better athlete, okay? The more powerful athlete is going to win a 50-50 or the stronger or the more fast athlete. So. The progressions I'm going to run through today, we're going to do vertical jump, single leg vertical jump, broad jump, single leg broad, lateral jump, and then single leg lateral jump. So you want to think about in the field as play, where you're moving, you're moving everywhere, you're reacting to the demands of the sport or the opponent. So you want to train like that as well, not saying train with full confusion and you don't know what the hell is going on, but I mean train like you're an athlete and then you're trying to expect the unexpected. So. Before I get into the demonstrations, set some rep protocols for jumps. So the classic scientific literature says beginners, 100 to 120 contact points per session. No, 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 80 to 100 contact points per session. Intermediate, 100 to 120. Advanced, 120 to 140, that's per session. Personally, I think that's a little bit higher. I wouldn't go and give my youth athletes 80 to 100 contact points before they go and do a session with me. You've got like a youth kid twice a week for an hour and then you go and flog them with 100 contact points of jumps before they're meant to do a strength session. Might be a little bit much for me. So that's all pretty dependent. Plyometrics per week, it just depends. Like there's no black and white answer. Like in season, off season, you know, injuries, what are they doing, what have they done before? There's just so many factors that go into programming plyometrics that I couldn't give you a general black and white, but you can use those kind of criteria that I just mentioned that's why you need a coach. The answer isn't more information, it's implementation of all this kind of stuff. So I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here. Part two, vertical jump, pretty straightforward. We're gonna use, we're gonna do a counter movement uh, like I showed you in the drop squat. So we're gonna start in a drop squat, bang, go into your landing and that's your vertical jump, that's step one. I'll show you dead on, I'm not the best athlete so uh, some of these look better if someone's more powerful than me, but I do all right. 58 centimeter vert, not too bad, nearly hitting the 60s. Shit compared to NFL or like really good athletes, but not bad for a, just a pro lifter like me. Cool, vertical jump, starting up in that position, drop squat, and then you're getting into a nice landing position there. So you can pull the shoot when you land, to be honest, I don't mind too much. How often are you gonna pull the shoot in the field of play? Not very much. Same thing with the single leg. I don't have enough power to do the single leg into a drop jump start and then go all on one leg. So I just like to bound off the floor and then get your landing in. I hope you can see that from there. Maybe I'll go back a little bit. Single leg and then get your landings in. Next progression we've got is your broad jumps. Landing nice and soft, and then you've got your single leg broad jump. So you can take off on the same leg, land on the same leg, take off on one, land off on the other, like that, and then you're alternating, like that, and you're alternating. Next progression, you've got your lateral jumps. So nice athletic position, jump, land stick, jump, land stick. After that, you've got your single leg laterals, and then jump, land stick, jump, land stick. So, I'll give you six basic progressions there. Go through two sets of three, three sets of three, however you want to do that. What have I got? Six exercises, three sets of three times nine, about 54. So if you did three sets of three, it'd be about 54 contact points of each. Did that twice a week, you definitely become better at producing force using your SSC. So it's pretty important with plyometrics that the contact point with the floor is nice and fast. That's why they say that you need to be a double body weight squatter to get full use out of doing plyometrics exercises. So you've got this thing. So you go down, 
in your eccentric and then up in your concentric. When you're changing over from eccentric to concentric, there's something called the amortization phase. Amortization phase, if it's too long, you lose the stretch shortening cycle, okay? So that's why, like you see weak people jump, or maybe you saw that, my kind of jumps, they're not getting the full effect that they should be out of their plyometrics then. Could you argue that they should be doing plyometrics? Maybe not. Maybe they should just be working on landing and absorbing the force and then getting strong. So I've given you a few little things to think about here. If you guys got something out of this video, like, share, comment, subscribe, do what you gotta do, send me an email. I love your feedback and I love doing this shit for you. So have a good day.